Hi, Minzo here. In the upcoming Bridge League there will be a shift in the fire meta. Time to do an in-depth video of the three new uniques that can make it happen. Xov is a Bridge Lord and he indirectly drops Tula's Heart Amulet and the Inception Bow. A world drop is the mallet called Nagamahu's Flame. What these three have in common is they all have damage conversion into fire. Clearly Grinding Gear Games is promoting the fire meta. And hence I'm going to make a bold statement. I assume they're not going to nerf ignite double dipping. I can't believe they're going through all this trouble to create fluff. However, that leaves poison double dipping isolated. And I think poison is going to be the bad C. Poison double dipping is going to get nerfed. Again. Okay, let's get to work. The amulet Tula's heart is giving the passive skill notable avatar of fire. And some more cool stats. The amulet is obtained by upgrading its little brother, the level 35 amulet called Tax Harp. The upgrading process is gated behind a Xoth boss drop, the blessing of Xoth that presumably drops roughly 50% of the time. Right, Avatar of Fire, as you might well know, converts all non-chaos damage into fire, and by doing so, it restricts your own damage by being pure fire. That's awesome for damage scaling with percentage increased fire damage, and creating big ignites. The downside is you cannot abuse the overpowered notable called Elemental Equilibrium, since you cannot deal lightning or cold damage yourself. A party member could still apply the debuff of course, so it's not all lost. Getting Avatar of Fire from the Amulet could save a lot of skill points. Take this classic Ranger Bow Tree for example. It can easily take like 18 skill points of reaching the Avatar notable on the skill tree, that's a lot. The Amulet gives a lot of strength. When scaled properly, you can scale the ability well above 500 and 500 strength gives 100% increased melee damage that can be converted into spell damage with Iron Will. Another option to make good use of strength is with Iron Grip. That converts the melee damage into projectile damage and projectile damage double dips when igniting. Neat stuff. Another interesting property is the covering of enemies in Ash. When your character is hit. Yes, that's not a great mechanic since you do not want to be hit in the first place. But whatever, when hit the monster is debuffed with minus 20% movement and 20% increased fire damage taken. And that's a very big deal since it works like a more damage multiplier. It's not exactly the same while having multiple damage taken modifiers like the status element shock, but close enough. 20% more damage is pretty nice. And most bosses always hit you sooner or later. And in a boss fight 20% more damage counts for a lot. The other properties are rock solid, penetration of 10 fire resistance, it's not exactly 10% more damage multiplier since the resistance of monsters can vary, but it's an awesome stat. 10% maximum life, why not, super amulet. Even though it has life, this amulet is not restricted for life based characters only. CI might well be able to float this build enabling amulet. And they're always short on strength for the red color gems, all is good. Hence this amulet get my stamp of approval, awesome top tier build enabling amulet. Up next, Xov Inception, the bow. Let's calculate the DPS it would have with 20% quality. That's 280. That's really disappointing. However, the free prolif counts for a lot. Let's do a scenario with some bad math. And pretend you'd otherwise link your main skill gem to the support elemental prolif. Prolif gives a penalty of 20% less damage, so we can take that as a bonus. And boom, we up the DPS to 338. But hey, we also get an open socket. Let's put a damage multiplier in there of let's say 50% more damage. And ta-da, we're now at a monstrous DPS of 500. With a sketchy scenario and some bad math. This bow doesn't seem so bad after all. Now all the talk about this bow is purely academic. It all depends on the radius. How much radius is nearby? Nearby enemies is used in different sources. Is it the same as the Prolif gem, 16 radius? Is it the same as the OP OP good old prolif from years ago with 30 radius? The Elementalist also gets a free prolif from Beacon of Rune. It has a small radius of 12 and it's rather underwhelming. So in order to choose this bow over the Elementalist it better be good because otherwise you'd better off with a 350 TPS Harbinger bow with 9% crit. And if not that there's plenty of unique bows to choose from. So this bow stands and falls by its unknown to be announced radius. Let's assume the radius is good and continue evaluating the potential. The damage conversion is awesome, another source for 50% fire conversion. The classic 50% conversion of fire are burning arrow, signal fire and avatar of fire. So we now have 4 sources and we only need 2 to reach 100% fire. 
That is the goal, easy damage scaling, the biggest bang for the biggest ignite. So what are the options now with the bow? While using burning arrow, we can now drop the quiver for another, drill neck for example. Pierce is awesome, a source for damage and better clear speed. A source for more projectiles is also needed, a GMP gem however gives damage penalty. The preferred option of course is the Dying Sun Flask, but very 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 expensive. But it's so perfect for burning arrow builds, a ruby base gives maximum fire resist against reflect, and reflect is a serious issue since you do so much damage. In the past I've one shot myself while being in parties on plenty occasions. A cheap, more projectile source is of course the skill Split Arrow. We can drop Drill Neck again and put back the signal fire for the lost conversion. Ok let's reset. The bow enables so many options, this is just the tip of the iceberg. What about the cold dealing ice shot? Avatar of Fire converts cold to into fire. And you can convert some more with the gem or the sapphire ring called Pyra. Pyra destroys corpses though, so it's harder to proliferate. Perhaps we should look at the choices in a different way, by how you apply the damage. You can either use a trap or direct damage, yes a trap. It's very interesting since whilst you stay away from danger, you can employ the point blank mechanic for more damage. The range is calculated from the trap you threw under the enemy's feet, that's close. Next there is the choice to go either crit or non crit. All fire crits ignite, so it's easy mode option, since for non crit you have to invest into chance to ignite. A prolift build has got to have a high chance to ignite or crit to get the prolift, otherwise you'd just be shooting blanks. Now open your mind, you're not limited to firing arrows. Physical damage from spells will be converted to fire as well. Sure, while wielding a bow you can cast spells. So what about the build that exploits the 94 life recovered when you ignite an enemy? Use something that hits a lot, like Blade Vortex, to ensure a lot of ignites. A monster can only have one active ignite, so enabling multiple ignites to stack up to 300 you can wear the rare unique called Ember Wake. Think about it. 20 stack Blade Vortex hitting 5 times for a total of 100 hits for a total of 100 ignites, giving you 10,000 life to be recovered. Good stuff. Basically with all these new damage conversion sources you can revisit not only physical spells but all cold spells as well. With the new amulet you do no longer have to travel on the skill tree to the top left corner. All those points spent will limit your options. Use the call to fire support gem for full conversion. As said before the pyre ring also converts but does not leave corpses on the ground to proliferate. Destroying corpses is a very good defensive mechanic though. Versus death effects like porcupines and detonate dead. Do not forget the existing fire build enablers, like Eye of Innocence and Red Cage shenanigans in combination with Vile Molten Shell. Players will need a lot of time to test all new possibilities. Ok, on to the last unique, the Colossus Malep called Negamahu's Flame. The 50% damage conversion makes for interesting elemental damage scaling, but how much DPS does this 2 hander have to begin with? With 20% quality, roughly 378 DPS. 378 is on the low side, however, it does have a free 20% fire resistance penetration. That's serious stuff. Now what if you convert all damage to fire? With some liberate math, we end up with 450 DPS mace. Now that's solid, end game viable. Now on this already solid mace there's something else. 20% to molten burst on melee hit. It's announced these bursts work like the projectiles from molten strike. If you've never played Molten Strike before, I can tell you, these projectiles are absolute murder. Let's refresh your memory what it looks like. These projectiles are mortars, they explode causing AOE damage, and because of that they can shotgun. Multiple projectiles can damage the same target, making for insane single target DPS. That's a major major deal. Scaling the damage of projectiles needs some thought. Since melee damage does not work on projectiles, but since we're scaling fire damage anyway, we got plenty good gems to work with, like wet and added fire, and there are plenty elemental damage skill nodes. Things are about to get a lot better. The Molten Burst is not scaled from your main skill setup in your chest. The Molten Burst is scaled through gems in the weapon itself. And the sockets don't even have to be linked, just like the unique Whispering Eye stuff. So boom, 6 awesome support gems working on the burst, without losing one socket on your main setup. Over the top, insane. OPOP. Exactly how and where the burst is going to appear is not clear to me. I've heard talk on the Lion Eyes podcast the burst appears where the monsters are hit. I find it hard to believe I understood that correctly, since it's more likely the projectiles appear around your character like Molten Strike. 
we'll find out. Now there are support gems that don't work on Molten Strike projectiles. Things like Chain Fork, Faster and Slower projectiles probably don't work on the Burst as well. Now we have arrived at an important puzzle piece. What main skill are we going to use for this monster? We got a pseudo cast on hit setup with 12 gems. Lol, 12 gems. It can be carnage. So what skill fits the fire team and could trigger the 20% chance? Well, first look at a fork in the road. Go for 100% damage conversion and do slow but big hits for nuclear burns like earthquake. Or go for 50% conversion and intentionally keep doing physical damage to be able to make use of physical attack life and mana leads. Or Specialize in proccing the 20% chance with fast hits. Two handers are generally not really fast. Is multi strike an option? No way. It's got to be Cyclone. It hits a lot, a lot, a lot. And all those projectiles will be springing all over the place. And it gets better. New slash. Weapon ranges are being reworked. They're going to be a lot bigger. So Cyclone is going to be huge. G, G. And there's Ember Wake, of course, to possibly support all those small hits for a lot of ignites. And to back it up, there is the Taming to increase damage by an inferno of increased damage modifiers. And, yes, this maze gets my stamp of approval as well. Final notes. These fire items will be extremely popular. When price checking, be careful. XIZ might list the first page for 5 chaos, but if you investigate further and scroll down, you might discover their real price. The top price list for 5k might be decoys, fake, made to confuse you to trick you to sell your items for a price below market value. These people are vultures and using programs to be the first to scout your bro deal. Before the general public can respond to your sale, they will already have whispered you. That could be multiple people. Ding, 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 four whispers. Just know you have made a mistake. Relax, retract the sale. Tell the buyers you've changed your mind and calmly proceed to find out how much you can milk these treasures for. Well, that was it for now. Thanks for watching.